All right, um, good morning, everyone. Uh, today we're taking on factoring variations, even more of them. So first we're looking at grouping, and grouping is a technique that we really use for problems that look like this. So whenever we have four terms and it's cubic, so a cubic polynomial could be more than that, that's fine. This is just a strategy we use to break it down as um, you know products of factors instead. So here, if I look at the first one, what's interesting is that I have x multiplied over the package of 2x minus 5, and then I have 4 multiplied over the same package of 2x minus 5. So what ends up happening here is that when these two packages, when they match like so, I can regroup it and take the x with that plus 4, join that together as a binomial multiplied by the 2x minus 5. So all I'm doing is I'm taking this structure and I'm writing it here in this more proper factored structure. So I can view this as x plus 4 times 2x minus 5. I always get a lot of questions about a problem like this. So what I want to do is I want to show you how those structures are really the same. So I've written it out both ways. So I've written out how the problem started and how I factored it. So here, let's say that I want to put them both back into standard form. I'm going to distribute this x over the 2x minus 5, which gives me 2x squared minus 5x. And I'm going to distribute that 4 over the same 2x minus 5. So now I have plus 8x minus 20. So you can see those four different pieces that emerge. Over here, I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to foil it out. So my first part here, my first part is 2x squared. Okay, my outer here is minus 5x. So what I'm seeing then is that first and that outer I can see that it's the same thing that happened here, right? So if I block out the 4 for a second, that x really just got distributed over that 2x minus 5 like it did over here. And then over here on this side, okay, my inner part right here, that inner part is taking the 4 times the 2x, just like we saw right here. So plus 8x. And then the last is the minus 20. So I can see that these two structures are really exactly the same because when I multiply it back out to make it go back to standard form, I see all those four pieces match perfectly. And in the end, they would all simplify to be 2x to the second power plus 3x minus 20. It would be the same thing over here. So again, I'm just showing you how those structures are the same. Okay, so now in my second example, here I have four terms, and what I want to do is I want to group the first two together and the last two together, and then I'm dividing out a greatest common factor. So over here, my, my greatest common factor would be uh, x to the second power. And when I divide x to the third power by x to the second power, I'm left with an x. If I divide negative 10x to the second power by x to the second power, I have minus 10. Okay, now over to the right, I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to block out this part, and I'm looking for a greatest common factor. They share a 3. What's left behind? An x minus 10. So now what I can see is that these two packages, they match perfectly, so I can regroup it and write it as x squared plus 3 times x minus 10. And I always look at it to see, am I done? Because sometimes over here I'll get something like x squared minus 4, and then I should be able to factor that down further. This one does not factor down any further, so we are done. All right, next we're looking at more complicated quadratic trinomials. So I'm really looking at what happens when that leading coefficient is not 1. So I'm looking at ax squared plus bx plus c. So that's a quadratic trinomial. Here is the highest degree term. It's quadratic. I have three of them. That's the trinomial part. 
and then the key identifier is that the A value is not 1. Right, I'm focusing on that A value right there. It's not 1. There are many different ways to factor. So ideally, we want you to be able to factor using um, a process called guessing and checking. And that's not easy for everyone. So I'm going to do it two different ways. So first, I'm going to show you how I would do guess and checking to get to my factors for this problem. So first, I'm looking at 2x squared. So that has to be a 2x and an x. So let's say I put the 2x here and the x for that first position. I know that that would multiply to make the 2x squared. Okay, the minus 5, really, I don't have that many choices, right? It has to be a 1 times a 5, could be the negative 1, or 1 times a negative 5 like that. Those are my choices for what goes here and here, right? And that would get me to the negative 5 overall as the product here and here. So then what I'm trying to focus on is what would get me that 9x in the middle, right? What would get me the 9x in the middle? So I want to focus on this outer part and this inner part. So if I put a 5 right here, let's say that I put the plus 5 right here, okay, that would get me a 10x right here, 10x. And then I'd put the negative 1 right here, that would give me a negative x or negative 1x. And those would combine to get me the 9x in the middle. So I found it. I found my two factors. My solution would be 2x minus 1 times x plus 5. Okay, but I know that that process is not easy for everyone. So let me show you another path. So my alternate path, we really use a grouping technique. So grouping. All right, so for grouping, let me go back to the original problem. I have 2x squared plus 9x minus 5. So my first instinct is to think, okay, what's the product? What's the sum? What is A times C? What is B? So my product would be the 2 times the negative 5, so negative 10. And the sum is 9. So I'm thinking of two numbers that multiply to a negative 10 that add to a positive 9. And that would be 10 and negative 1. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these terms here, here, and here. And I'm going to replace that linear term in the middle, right there. So I'm going to write this now as 2x squared plus 10x. So I'm just adding the x back here and here. I usually don't write it, but that's what I'm doing. So 2x squared plus 10x minus 1x, or just minus x, write it like that, and then take away 5. So all I've done is I've taken this 9x and I've expressed it as the sum of two separate terms like so. But if I add those together, it takes me right back to the 9x right there. So now I'm looking at my first two terms and my last two terms, and I'm going to factor by grouping. So here, what's their greatest common factor? They share a 2 and an x, so 2x. What's left behind? So if I divide out a 2x, I have an x here. Divide out a 2x here, I have a 5. Okay, over here, all I can divide out is a negative 1. That's okay. Sometimes all I can divide out is a positive 1. So I'll take it, negative 1. Okay, and then if I divide a negative 1 out of each of these terms, I'm left with x plus 5. These match, so I can regroup it and write it as 2x minus 1 times x plus 5. So again, you can see that these match. These match. Even if these came out in a different order, that's okay. It's still the same two factors. Okay, next one, I'll do it the same way. So first here in this one, I'm going to draw out my two sets of parentheses. When I'm thinking of the 3x squared, I know it has to be a 3x and an x. So those first two positions, they're really set already. All right, so now for the 8, that negative 8, well, it could be a 2 and a 4. Okay, and it could be um, the negative 2, positive 4, positive 2, negative 4, could be 1 and 8. Okay, so I'm just looking at positives and negatives. Those are the only options that it can work out to be. 
And when I'm thinking through my options, I'm looking at my outer and my inner part just like that. And I'm trying to think of what numbers could I put in these slots that'll get me a negative 10x in the middle, okay? And once I fiddle with it a little bit, I'm gonna see that this option is really the option I'm looking for. So if I put a negative four right here, so if I put a negative four here, that will be negative 12x. And then if I put the two here, the positive two here, that would be 2x. So those would make up that negative 10x that's in the middle. So my factors are 3x plus 2, in parentheses, times x minus 4. Okay, but again, I know that that's not easy for everyone. So let's go back and do that same grouping technique that we did before. So here I'm just going to rewrite it. I have 3x squared minus 10x minus 8. Make my little cross, looking for my product, a times c, and my sum, which is b. So my product is a negative 24, and my sum is a negative 10. So that has to be a, a negative 12 and a positive 2. Now, the order I put these, it really doesn't matter. I could swap them. It would be perfectly fine. So again, I'm taking these two here. I'm going to slap an x on them. And they're going to replace that negative 10x that's in the middle, right there. So I now have 3x squared minus 12x plus 2x and then minus 8. Okay, and again, when I look here, right, that would take me back to that negative 10x. So now I group the first two and the last two like that. So GCF here is a 3x, leaving behind an x minus 4. Over here, GCF is just a 2, so plus 2, leaving behind an x minus 4. These guys match right there, so I can rewrite it as 3x plus 2 times x minus 4. All right, same answer that I got that initial way for both of them. Okay, so just showing you, you have options for how to factor. Uh, we love it if you're able to do this fast, but if you can't, you have an alternate procedure to follow that grouping process. Okay, next, pointing out that we also have perfect square trinomials. We covered this in the basic factoring lecture as well, so this is just a reminder. So here I have, let me switch my colors, here I have something in the structure of x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. That's really saying x plus y times itself, which really is x plus y squared. Okay, and I also have another pattern, a perfect square trinomial, where it's x squared minus 2xy plus y squared, which would be x minus y times x minus y, which is really x minus y squared. So a perfect square trinomial always factors into a binomial square. And with the examples that I'm doing here, all of these ones now have a leading coefficient other than one. So I'm just showing you that you can have this variation even when it's a more complicated type. It doesn't always have to be so basic. So what I need to do is I need to identify, is the first term a perfect square? Yep, it's 3x as a quantity squared. How about the 25? Right, that's just 5 squared. Okay, so then if I multiply the 3x and the 5, that's 15x, and I double it, does it get me what's in the middle? It does. So this becomes just 3x plus 5 squared. Okay, let's say that I didn't recognize that. I could always factor it just like this. I could factor it like it's a more complicated quadratic trinomial. That would be perfectly fine. I'm just able to identify little shortcuts, little patterns that help me go faster and be more efficient. Okay, this next one here, I can see that that's a 2x squared, and that's a 7 squared. So 2x times 7 is 14x. Double, does it get me in the middle? Yes. Only difference is the sign. So 2x minus 7 as a quantity squared. 
All right, lastly here, this is a preview topic that we teach in Algebra 2. So that would be uh, Advanced Algebra or Intermediate. You're going to learn it in both classes, so it's just one other structure. So we have a sum of cubes, and we have a difference of cubes. So a sum of cubes would mean that I have x to the third power plus y to the third power. So a perfect cube plus a perfect cube. This breaks into a small set of parentheses and a large set of parentheses. So first I'm just going to take the x and the y. So x and y go into those first two slots. And then the x gets squared. We multiply the two, x, y, and then the y gets squared. And then we add in the signs. So it's going to be the same sign, the opposite sign, and then always positive. We often say SOAP to help you remember that. So same sign, opposite sign, always positive. Since it was a plus right here, same sign is positive, opposite sign is negative, and then always positive. And then if it's a difference of cubes, I have a perfect cube minus a perfect cube. That breaks into my small set of parentheses, my large set of parentheses. The x and y transfer over. The x gets squared, the product of the two. The y gets squared. Same sign, so minus, minus. Opposite sign, always positive. So there's my soap. Same sign, opposite sign, always positive. OK, so now here, are they perfect cubes? They are x to the third, 2 to the third. So I make my small parentheses and my large parentheses. The x and the 2 fall into place. The x gets squared, the product of the 2, so 2x two in the middle. And here, that y part gets here squared. 2 squared is 4. OK, and then same sign, started off minus, stays minus, opposite sign, plus, always positive, plus, right there. And then I can box it, fully factored, right, a new pattern to look for. OK, and my next one here, well, is 27 a cube? Yep, it's 3 cubed. OK, how about x to the 6? Well, yeah, that's x to the second power cubed. And then 64 is 4 cubed. So again, I always start off by looking at what is it that's being cubed. Here it's the 3x to the second power. Here it's the 4. Okay, make your small parentheses and your large ones. So here I'm just transferring down the 3x squared and the 4. And then I take this number and I square it. You don't want to forget that the 3 gets squared too. So 3 squared is 9 x to the second power squared is x to the fourth. And then in the middle, product of these two terms, so 12x squared. And then here, right, the y part gets squared. So 4 squared is 16. Okay, same sign, so plus, opposite sign, minus, always positive. And then box your final answer like so. All right, that's all I have for today. Have a good rest of your day.